Um, I've started sports when I was little um, to probably um, all through high school. I was a three sport athlete. I played varsity for most of my sports all through high school, um, field hockey, track. Um, like I said, I've been so busy. I went to college and um, I stopped all sports. I did not play in any intramural. Um, I got pretty lazy. I worked a lot. Um, I then got pregnant probably um, when I was 21 and I weighed about 200 pounds at the end of my pregnancy with my first child, which was a lot. I'm only like five, one and a half, maybe five, two, if that. So <laughs> weighing 200 pounds was a lot on my body. So I decided to, um, take it upon myself and get fit again. Um, I did a few races. Um, I ran a lot. Um, I ended up losing over 65 pounds by myself, no trainer, no nothing. Um, just self-motivation, which was really challenging for me, but it taught me a lot. Um, and then I went to basically by the time I got back to my weight, I got pregnant again for my second one. And um, I gained another probably 50 pounds. Um, so I had to lose a lot again. I probably lost, I had to lose another 30 after my second pregnancy. And after my second, second pregnancy, I resorted back to running and eating good. Um, but a few things changed. Like Joan said, I moved to Poland, um, which was um, very different for me. Um, if any of you don't know where that is, it's out in the middle of nowhere I live down a mile and a, probably a mile dirt road. Um, <laughs> we don't even have cable out here, so it's pretty remote. Um, so it made me, there was so many changes, I guess, through this time after my second baby. Um, also there's, the nearest gym is probably 30 minutes, I think in Auburn, and they just got a Planet Fitness there. Um, so <laughs> having kids, that's not an option to travel 30 minutes. Um, also I became a stay at home mom with my second child. So I was home all the time. I wasn't getting any in adult interaction, which was kind of a bummer, but, um, so moving up here, nobody kind of made me feel in a rut. I hated running up here. I have hills and I just, I was just at that point of, no return basically. So I was on Facebook one day and um, I saw a, Joan happened to friend request me and it was funny because she was a mutual friend of a friend and I was like, I don't know if I should add this person because at the time I had my Facebook totally private. Um, I hated adding people I didn't even know, but something of her profile picture caught my eye and I was like, I'll just add her. So I ended up adding her and I think it was within that night or maybe around dinner time, she posted about a challenge pack. And I was like, what is this? Let me ask her about it. So I ended up asking her about it. And I remember talking with my husband. I'm like, I'm a stay at home mom. There's no way I can afford this. Like really? Um, I can't afford a hundred dollars on my fixed income budget. Like we're strapped as it is. Like <laughs> this isn't going to work. I was like, but I really need this. I felt like I really, really needed it. So I told him, I was like, you know, maybe I will make extra money. My husband travels a lot. So we talked about me maybe getting a second job at night, you know, trying to fit it into our schedule. And he travels so much that we're like, it's not going to work. If you're gone one weekend, I'm not going to be able to work. So I was like, this really could work. So we talked about it and I was like, just put it on the credit card. We're going to have to put it on the credit card and deal with it. So we ended up putting it on the credit card and I was like, Oh man. And Joan's like, you can make it back. You can make it back. And I was like, I don't think I can. I don't think I can. This is impossible. So I, I remember making my first post and I was horrible at writing. Oh my gosh. I think Joan rewrote my thing three times before I even posted it because it was that bad. Um, but I ended up we ended up um, figuring something out and I posted it and I ended up getting like a hundred likes and probably at least 12 or 13 comments. So I was like, wow, this is crazy. And within that time I had 
within like, I think 28 hours, I had four people sign up within that 28 hours. And I was shocked. I was like, I just made my challenge back. back. Are you freaking kidding me? So I called my husband. I'm like, I just made my money back. Like within 28 hours, like seriously, this is nuts. So I was so excited and I was like, oh, I got this. So I talked to Joan and Joan's like, I can't believe it. You got four people. You made your challenge money back and maybe then some. She's like, this is great. And you made success club in, oh, in 28 hours. I was like, I really did this. Oh my gosh. It's that easy. Like as opposed to that easy. So the next week went on and I didn't, I didn't really chat to anybody. I was really scared, really afraid to talk to anybody. I kept on telling Joan, I can't do this. Like I can't type. I can't, I, I just felt like I couldn't do it. I kept on saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I realized, oh my gosh, I just brought myself in a circle of I can't. Like I just totally convinced myself that I can't do this. So I was like, what? Well, that's going to change. So I started thinking, all right, what if I can do, if I did this in 28 hours, I can do it again and again and again and again. And that was my kind of mindset. And every time I got a no, I was like, I got down and I'm like, Joan, I can't do this again. And she's like, yes, you can. You did this in 28 hours. You got four people. You can do this. I was like, I can't, I can't. And I just kept on going around in a circle of I can't. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is awful. It's like I went up. I was elated for like that 28 hours that I got the four people. And then I, it's like I hit rock bottom again and crashed. So I was a little bit bummed, but I just kept on going. And I kept on talking. And then she's like, you got to make your Facebook public. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I cannot do that. And then she invited me to the Christmas party. I was like, oh, no way. I'm not going there. So all these things that all these new things were coming at me and I'm like, I felt so uncomfortable and I'm like, you know what? I got to stop saying I can't because I will be stuck forever where I am if I keep on saying this. So you know what? I just got to suck it up. And I went to the Christmas party. I didn't know anybody except I only talked to Joan. I've seen Kat on a few um, uh, Zooms that I did with Joan and Ryan. I saw a few times. So I was like, oh, you know. But I went, and that was a huge thing for me. And so all these little things that I started saying I can't, I started noticing, and I started turning them around and saying, I can do these things, I can do these things. And I'm such a motivated person, and I really am. So I was like, you know what? I just got to start with this I can attitude and be positive and post it, post about it, post about um, what I'm doing and just deal with it. So what if people don't like me? Whatever. So I made my Facebook public and it was like all history from there, basically. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I noticed that, like I said, I made tons of excuses and you've really got to put down the excuses. And I know some of you have been doing this for a long time and some of you are brand new at this. So if you're brand new, I suggest you stop saying you can't and really you can because I did it in 28 hours, and if somebody else can do it, in, and if I can do it in 28 hours, somebody else can do it in 28 hours. So I just encourage you guys to just keep on shooting for the I cans instead of I can't, because you'll get yourself in a whirlwind of I can't do anything, but you can. So that's cool. Um, basically, how I got to Diamond in 38 days was. Um, 34 days, sorry, was Joan. No, I'm just kidding. Joan did it all for me, guys. Um, no, she pushed me. And that's what a good coach does. They push. And I encourage all of you coaches to push because it works. Your coaches might not like you. And on the receiving end, like me, I didn't like it very much, but it pushed me and I made it in 34 days. Um, I, I like to keep things very, very simple. I'm like tonight, I didn't do slides because I'm keeping it simple because that's how I did it. I kept it simple. I posted, I drank my shakes and I was positive. I kept it real. I can't even tell you the amount of messages that I've got. Wow. Why are you so positive? Like what the heck is going on? What are you doing? Like people's curiosity kills with the positive part of everything. Um, the positive is with everybody being so positive, I guess I should say 
it really catches people's eyes because Facebook is so negative and everybody's like, you're so positive. So I think that was like a huge thing for me was like, wow, I am really positive. Like I really stopped posting negative stuff. I really changed my lifestyle and I, I'm consistent and I'm positive. And that's another thing is consistency. Consistency is huge. I add about 15 to 20 people per day. I might not talk to them every day. I might not like them. I like things on their page every day, but um, I add them. Maybe the next day I'll like three things, three pictures of their page. Um, I'll go down like the 20 people I added like the day before and I'll like three things on each page just to get their curiosity, just to show them I'm interested in what they're doing. Um, that was a huge thing that I think that helped a lot just to get people back to my page and kind of liking their stuff too. So it shows that I'm not just IMing them, hey, want to buy a challenge pack type of thing. So that was a huge thing that I did. Um, also, um, what else? Let me see. Um, another big thing was I reached out to the people that I knew that were going to be solid, the, my biggest supporters. Um, my mom is one of my biggest supporters of this. Um, my husband joined shortly after. Um, get the people surrounding you that are going to support you, that are going to lift you up, and that are going to stay connected with you, that you know that that they're gonna be there for a long time, basically. So that's why I added, my mom joined, my, my husband joined recently, my sister joined recently. Um, I had a few friends from high school that joined me recently. I had random people that just saw my post. And so basically, I kept a few tight-knit people that you know were close to me, that I knew that were gonna support me. So I reached out to them first. Um, don't be shy. Um, I was so shy and now I'm not. And it's kind of funny. Um, even about this Friday thing, I'm actually going, it's funny because I just told Joan a few minutes ago that I was going by myself to this event um, on the 8th, which is a huge step for me because I would drag my husband along or somebody along, but I'm going by myself. My husband will be away. So don't be shy anymore. Really step out of your box. Like, what's it going to hurt? So that's kind of like my attitude now. Like, if I random somebody, I mean, if I message somebody randomly and say, hey, want to join my challenge group? Like, I'm not even afraid to do that anymore. I don't even care. So you just got to get over it, I guess. So to any newbies here, get over it. Um, <laughs> that's kind of kind of how I am. Um, so just get over it and, you know, really reach for your goals. Um, I had my first goal that I wrote down was um, to pay off debt. And it's funny because I haven't paid off any debt yet, but that's okay because I just started. And um, I will eventually probably pay it off, but I got to pay my oil bill this month. And I have a huge three floor house. Um, so <laughs> to pay my oil bill is pretty awesome cash. Um, I paid for my husband to join. Um, I paid for some Christmas gifts. I mean, I made about $800 this month, which is crazy because I originally just wanted to pay for my shakes for the month. And not to mention, I went diamond. So Never set your goal little. Go for it. Um, make big, big goals. Don't be afraid of them either because I was afraid of that I wasn't going to get there and that I think we're afraid of failure more, I guess. I hate to fail, so I set my goal little. But then Joan kept on pushing me, and that's why I say coaches, push your coaches because – the more you push, they're going to hate you for it for a second, but they're really not because it's going to push you to be a bigger and better person. And it, that's where I am right now. I am so thankful and grateful for Joan that she's pushed me. And she's like, oh, you can sell two more challenge packs by tomorrow. You've got this. And I'm like, no, I don't. I can't do this. And I'll be darned. The next day I've sold four challenge packs. 
Christmas day, I sold one. So it's, you never know what can happen. So I just suggest you guys to reach out. Don't be shy. Um, push yourself to the limits. Um, step out of your comfort zone. Um, I can't say enough to step out of your comfort zone. It has taught me so much in 34 days. It's unbelievable. Um, also, um, like I said, reach out to people. Don't be shy. Um, get your bigger supporters with you. Get alongside somebody that supports you, that's going to push you. And I think that's the biggest thing that has pushed me is the accountability. That's another thing. The accountability is insane. I think that if Joan wasn't consistent and accountable with me, I probably would have never reached this. But she was on me. She was accountable. And that's what makes a good coach. So I just suggest to all of you just to really push yourselves. This is the last meeting before the new year. So I just want to encourage you um, to just push. I keep it simple. It's not hard. I keep it simple. I drink my shakes. I'm consistent. I post. And, oh, that's another thing. Posting is not easy for me. I hated posting. When Joan told me I had to post three to five times a day, I thought she was crazy. And... I post now. I'm getting a little bit better at it. I was scared at posting, but coach about how you feel. What makes you you? What makes you unique? And I know a lot of you have heard this already, but it works. What Joan taught me works. And I think when a plan is put in place, if you follow it, it's going to work. Just like if you have your 21 day fix, you follow it to a T, it's going to work. You do your exercise, you drink your shakes, you eat good, it's going to work. Same with this. You follow, you drink your shakes, you post, you like, you follow up, you follow through, it's going to work. So just keep going, guys. I'm so excited. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm so happy I get to do this. I know I didn't have any slides. It wasn't perfect, but, you know, I spoke from my heart, and this is what encourages me and what keeps me going, and I'm so excited to have such a good team and people behind me. So again, thank you guys for letting me do this. And hooray for the new year. I know everybody's going to do so good. And um, good luck. That was an amazing call. People agree with me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, amazing. Like you can just see like the passion behind what you're saying and hear the passion behind what you're saying. And I mean, it is, I'm just saying like you guys didn't talk to her 34 days ago, but she is a completely different person than she was. I mean, she's still, I always told her she was a joke anyways, when she said she would die, but, um, but <coughs> as I choke on my own spit, um, but you know, like, this all started because she liked a post or because she accepted a friendship of somebody who she didn't know, liked a post of theirs, and then they actually responded to the fact that she liked the post and reached out to them and followed up, right? So she's talking about yeah. keeping it simple. I mean, it cannot be more simple than that. I posted a challenge group post. Kelsey liked it. I did my part by posting. I did my part by, part by reaching out once she liked it. And then following through and pushing her to get started. And, you know, and that's what's been working for her. So keeping it really simple is the name of the game. And I'll just tell you guys this. She said she didn't make slides tonight. But do you know she doesn't have a laptop? She's built her entire business on her cell phone. She's doing a <laughs> call right now from her cell phone. So, like, really there's no excuses. Like, oh, I don't have a computer. Oh, I don't have bull crap. Like, she did it from a phone. Um, one of the things too, is that I love that you said, you know, um, you know, don't make your goals small, make them big because the, the truth is, is that you are the person who determines whether you can do them or not. You set mm -hmm. them and you're the person who's responsible for making them. It's not anybody else. Um, I read this quote the other day and I freaking love it. And it's actually from the book, the circle maker. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it's a great book. Um, it's a little bit more religious than most books that I recommend, but, um, there's a quote that says, your dream isn't bigger than God. So if you think about that, like there is nothing that you, like he made you, there's nothing you can't accomplish. So like you have to go out there and just say, this is what I want and I'm going for it and know that like 
whether you want to call it God or the universe or whatever, like they want you to shine, you know, so go out there and do it. Um, and then like just about not being shy. So like everything you want is on the other side of fear. Like absolutely everything you want is on the other side of it. So you just have to remind yourself when you have that little fearful thought, like just choose to see it differently. Tell yourself those lies when you're saying I can't are lies. Talk to your coach, tell them about it and change the way you think. Because what do you have to lose? You have everything to gain and you have nothing to lose. So like just go for it. Um, I will say that, you know, she just gave me way more credit than I deserve saying that like it was all me that helped her and me keeping her accountable and all of that. It's the absolute, that's a lie. That's not the truth. The truth is, is that Kelsey messaged me every single day, multiple times a day, taking responsibility for her job as a coach and asking me questions and asking for help when she needed it. You are the CEO of your own business. Nobody else is going to go out there and build it for you. So if you want it, not only do you have to be doing the work, but if you need help, you have to ask for it. You know, nobody's a mind reader. And once you get going in this business, I think one of the key things to keep um, in mind is don't stop doing all of those things that got you to diamond in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, so Kelsey and I have a meeting set up for tomorrow to talk about her next goals. Well, part of that meeting is just going to be like, don't stop doing what you are already doing because that's what got you where you are and just teaching that to the other people so that it's duplicatable is how you get further than that um and finding a running buddy like I cannot tell you how important that is like okay so this refers to maybe a success partner I wouldn't rush finding a success partner but it also is about your coaches Okay. You want to find those coaches that give you energy and that help you keep going as well. Because I can tell you, Kelsey was definitely brought to me at the right time. See, getting tearful. <laughs> I was tearful when she was talking too, because towards the end of this year, I was having a hard time. And a lot of people get to diamond that fell. Um, I was feeling down about things and my abilities. And the truth is, is that I was trying to push people who didn't want it. It is about offering help to those who want it. And if they want it, then you can help them achieve whatever. But it is not about dragging people behind you. And you guys are going to have so much fun in this business. And you can achieve anything and have such an amazing time if you just put yourself out there and reach out to enough people that you can find those running buddies to do it with you. Because I really appreciate it. I really appreciate Kelsey because she helped build me back up too. Um, so that's it really. Listen to your coach. Keep it simple. And the three vitals. It was an amazing call. Thank you for sharing that with all of us. Um, You're welcome. Does anybody have questions for Kelsey? Good job, Kelsey. Thank you, Ryan. 34 days. <laughs> anybody have a question? <laughs> On her cell phone. <laughs> I may be a little over emotional right now because my grandmother's in the hospital too, as you guys may know. So <laughs> I don't cry. Can I ask a question? Yeah. How do you overcome the, the shyness? How did I overcome the shyness? <laughs> um, yeah. It was not easy. Um, I still struggle with it every single day. Um, with little things, with big things. Um, I just had to put the mindset down <laughs> that if I am shy all the time, I'm not going to get anywhere. If I let that overcome, like if that, if I let it be me, I'm not going to get any, get anywhere. So I have to lay it down, put it somewhere, let it go because I'm never going to get above that. So I started with little things. Um, I made a challenge post. I made my Facebook public. Um, those were like the little things that I started with. And <laughs> I went to a Christmas party event for the coaches. That was a huge thing. You just got to do it. You just got to post. You just got to I can't say it enough. You just got to let it go because you're not going to go anywhere in your business if you're going to let shyness and fear overcome you every single day um, because this is a business of talking to people. So like I said, 
you need to step out. You need to just do it. Post it. I was even scared about posting my before and after. I was debating with Joan and Katie Gamage for an hour, maybe the whole day of posting half of my body. I said, well, maybe I'll just do my arms. And she's like, that's not good enough. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll do like right here and up. That's good. And she's like, no. I was like, all right, maybe I'll do my backside. And she's like, no. And my side view. And she's like, no. And I was like, oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. I will take you out to dinner. I will do anything. I'm not posting this stupid thing. And she's like, yes, you are. And I was like, all right crop it to my belly button and that's it <laughs> nobody's seeing my stretch marks nobody's seeing my floppy skin okay like <laughs> not gonna happen so she agreed with me that i could show up to my crop part of my belly button and that was the biggest thing for me because i was so worried about shame what people were gonna say to me but you know what after i posted it now i'm like it really wasn't even that bad like i had a I think I had 85 likes on my post. Like, that's a lot of likes. So, I mean, that's a lot of people that are interested in your program. So, I mean, you just got to do what works. You got to, it, it is uncomfortable because everybody sees everything. But if you want a, a successful business, you've got to put yourself out there and you've got to be willing to be transparent with, with your body and with everything you do because you got to be real with this business. So that's kind of how I look at it. it you just got to put the fear away and just kind of go with it. Little steps at a time and then just start doing bigger things and bigger things, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, a few different other things like about that. I mean, you know, Chris Reed, if you've ever seen his post, he does this post every once in a while where he says, um, person, tell me what I need to do to be successful. Me, do this, this, and this person. Well, I don't want to do about that. How about something else? If you've seen that post that he does, he does it all the time. And the truth is, is that your coach is here to tell you exactly what to do to be successful. So it's not rocket science. It's not, you know, some mystery or magic thing that your coach is doing why they're successful and you're not. So when they tell you to do something, it's because that's what works. And so do it, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable, because chances are the only reason that you don't want to do something is because you're fearful about it. And if you're fearful about it, that probably means that you should be doing it even more. Because once you're on the other side of that, that's when like you just, I don't know, like I, I related to Kelsey. I was like, listen, Chris told me I had to post my before and after picture and Ryan said it too. And I was like, screw both of you. I'm not doing it. But I did it, and in the end, it was awesome because all you do is get like a ton of love back from everybody else. Mm -hmm. The other thing to note is when um, worrying about reaching out to people is start thinking about you and how you got to where you are right now. You know, start playing that tape in your head of everything that Beachbody has done for you so far and what you love about it. Did you, you know, have you lost weight? Are you feeling more energy? Do you have a community of people or friends that you didn't have before? Are you more confident? Have you made money? Are you mad at your coach for signing you up as a coach? Probably not, right? Mm -hmm. You're probably grateful. I'm pretty freaking happy that I got signed up as a coach. So I'm pretty sure that everybody on this call is too. That's what you're offering to somebody else. So you have to be unapologetic about the service behind this business and focus on what you have to offer somebody and what you can help them with mm -hmm. rather than worrying about yourself and what somebody might think about you, right? Worry about helping, you will be successful. Worry about yourself, you will not, okay? And then the last thing that I wanted to post too is that if anybody else is feeling those things about like, I don't want to post my stretch marks and I don't want to post whatever. Listen, Sean T was even asked a question about why he posted a picture that had his stretch marks in it, you know? And he was like, that is how I got to where I am today, you know? So do not be afraid to post that stuff and do not be apologetic about it because that is part of your journey and what made you who you are and why you are where you are right now. So if you're happy with where you are, you freaking love those stretch marks and you post about them because it's going to help somebody else to get to where you are now too. It's going to help them through it. You know, I am not regretful. I am, I am actually extremely happy for absolutely everything that has happened in my life, even the bad, because honestly, 
I wouldn't be who I am or where I am today without it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the sad, the horrible, all of it. I wouldn't be where I am. So you That's have right. to embrace it and spin it into a positive so that you can help other people because that's what it was put there for anyways, was for you to learn from so you can help others. Um, what else? Somebody said, what did you tell your friends and family who might have been skeptical about what you're doing, Kelsey? Um, basically, I lived it out. Everybody was so skeptical, basically, at first. They're like, what are you doing? Even my husband, I just got him signed up maybe a week ago. So <laughs> it hasn't been that long. But um, I guess I lived it out. I mean, I, I drank my shakes. I ate right. And I did what I had to do. Everybody saw my pot. I mean, being positive, you can't go wrong. Um, what is somebody going to say to you about being positive? I mean, there's nothing bad that they can say back at you. So I, you know, I just lived it out and people saw, um, my weight loss. People saw, and I'm not a, I'm not a very tall person, so I'm very short. So, I mean, people, maybe I had a little bit less to lose than other people. So I was a little bit nervous about that when I started, but the inches started going and my pictures, I would show people my pictures and everybody was like, wow, like, holy cow, I didn't believe you at first. And, you know, just living it out and being true to yourself, people are going to notice and people are going to be like, wow. So I think I just kept it real. I just kind of, I don't know. I guess that's what I did. Kept it real. <laughs> <laughs> I love that answer. It's a good answer. And you know, basically she said she just proved them wrong, right? Like she. Yeah, basically I kept my mouth shut and I said, you know, I just followed through with what I had to do. Exactly. There's nothing better. You know, we, we hear from people all the time about like, even like spouses being, you know, I can't wait for the spouse panel at this event, by the way, see <laughs> people around you, bring them to this event because quite frankly, you know, the best way to get somebody on board that wasn't on board before is to show them, is just to show them. So yeah, live it out because if you're losing weight, if you're happier, if you're making more money and share that with them. So those people who are skeptical say like, hey, you know what? I just sold something and made $50 or I just sold something and made $100 or whatever it may be because that's when they're going to be like, oh, wait, really? You're making money with that? Or I just lost 10 pounds. And they're like, huh, really? You know, so that's the best, the best thing to do is just to be proof that not only the product works, but that coaching works. Sure, and then that's, that's, okay. that's when you'll uh, turn them over. That's what happened to Cody. That's what happened to Julie. That's what happened yeah. to myself. So I was on a coach call with Chris Reed when he first signed me up back in 2013. And it had been going on for about 30 minutes. We were talking strategy, adding people. I think he was going over genealogy or something like that. And Joni yells at me from this couch. I was in the other room on a coach call because I was taking too long with this dude in Texas that I had signed up for. And she wanted me to hurry up and get off the freaking Zoom call because <laughs> I needed to come here and watch the Kardashians with her. And that's I don't not, think it was the Kardashians. It was one of those shows, but that seems a bit dramatic. It was very. <laughs> but mindset has changed. Obviously, she's not the same person because this was introduced into both of our lives. Yeah. So I became a believer. I mean, some people might not know this, but I was the skeptical person. Ryan signed up as a coach first. I was like, "Hell no! Have fun. I'll support you from afar." Um, but my proof came in just doing a program myself and seeing and feeling the results. So, you know, if you can get that skeptical person to at least do a program, then they will become at least a believer in the product, you know, and, and that's a step in the right direction. Um, so like I tell people all the time, it's going to be really hard to sign somebody up as a coach if they won't even get in a challenge group. <laughs> It's going to be hard to get a partner on board if they don't even believe that like, you know, T25 works. So, um, 
that would be my answer to that. Does anybody else have another question? Um, if not, then Kelsey, there's just like a crap load of like, Whoa. awesome. You did amazing. Yeah. I can't see anything. So it says, it says <laughs> way to phone. go. You rock. This was freaking awesome. Great quality. So inspirational. Great job. Whoop, whoop. Um, whoop, whoop. Great job. Love, love, love your energy. Thank you for spreading that all over the place. You rock, lady. That was awesome, Kelsey. I love your enthusiasm. Smiley face. Love your energy. Great call. Good job. Um, great job. Great job. Way to be a rock star. You rocked it. So there you go. All that love right back at you. All right, guys. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post this team call on the team page after this. And what I would love is for everybody that was on this call to go ahead and jump on there. And I want you to put something in the comment section under the video, just saying one big takeaway that you got from this. Okay. All right, guys, I love you all. Um, we're going to have a happy new year and let's finish this year. Isn't that weird? Let's finish this year strong. By the way, we're finishing it as an elite team. So congrats, everybody. That's freaking awesome. Woo! Second year in a row. So pretty badass. I'm really proud of all of you. And I can't tell you how grateful I am for every single person on this call and every single person on this team. Um, and I'm really, really, really excited to see where we go in 2016. So lots of love to you guys. Um, hope you had a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Stay safe.